Hi. This video I'm going to do a brief tutorial starting with the end result of the Applied Houdini Rigids 1 Fundamentals tutorial, which ends with this scene of falling pigs rendered with the mantra renderer. I wanted to go through and see what was needed to render this scene with Redshift. So to start with, I want to go over briefly what is in this scene itself. We have six nodes at the top level. There's one called the sim, which is a basic RDB sim. There's test geometry of the pig head brought in. It's fractured. We add a material for the inside. There's some... I'm not going to go through the tutorial. That's the point of the tutorial. The end result is an out node which animates these pigs falling. I haven't cached this, so it won't actually run in real time but falling and shattering on the ground. Then we have simply ground, which is this plane that curves up in the back and is set to this nice blue color to give a background. There is an environment light, which is this garage scene from the uh, built-in. It's an included H H R HDRI texture that comes with Houdini. And there's a camera I've set up to look at this, and then two nodes that are both just object merges to bring the geometry in for actually rendering. Uh, this is a technique kind of encouraged by the applied Houdini, so we can more easily determine what can be rendered, what needs to be rendered, and what doesn't. To start with, I think the easiest thing to do is to just put down a redshift rendering node and see what we get from it. So if we take the IPR node, link that back to our ROP. Yeah, we'll go in here and make sure we have the camera set. That's kind of the most important thing. Uh, the rest of this we can tweak later. Um, I am going to go into objects and change this to RNDR star to match the way it was set up with the, the mantra renderer. So after we put this node down for the, the Redshift renderer, go into the render view, make sure we've selected the Redshift renderer, press the render button, and we should get an idea of what Redshift is going to see from this. So first thing we notice is that the scene is really, really dark. Uh, we're getting some kind of default light, and we get a warning out of Redshift that it's unable to load the HDRI Haven Skylit Garage 2K.rat. Um, basically, the file, the textures, the HDRI textures that come with Houdini are in a format that Redshift can't handle. This is pretty easy to fix. We can go into the environment light, and I've just downloaded this texture into my project in HDR format, which Redshift does understand, and we should be able to render this and at least get some lighting. So you see we get shading on the pigs. Um, not interesting shading, but it's a nice gray shader, and we have no background. So, good starting point. So the first thing I want to do is get kind of an overview of what we actually have for textures in this world. Under materials you can see we have a ground shader. This is the shader set for this background. And we have inside, which is the ceramic material inside the pigs. This is a pretty easy pair to recreate using Redshift. So I'm going to come in here, create a Redshift material builder. I'll call this RS inside. And then we haven't changed anything, so let's just go ahead and copy it and call this RS ground. What I like to do is take the base color from these, copy the parameter from the, the ground, and set the under the GL tab, paste this in here. This gives me two little benefits. One is it makes the color appear this way in the viewport. And second, 
this color is a convenient place to come for copy paste when you need it later. We then go into the ground. We see a material shader, kind of a, this is kind of like the principal shader. And what I'm going to do is pick something, say paper, and I'm going to paste the color in to get that basic color. And then I'm going to take this backlighting translucency and I'm going to turn this down to zero. Um, this is nice for paper. It would make the background look strange. So this should give us a ground material. And in fact, if we go back, let's put this over here. If we go back to our ground, we can set this render material to RS ground. And you'll see we get some specula specular effects here. Um, easy to just turn the roughness all the way up to kind of simulate what that will look like. So if we come into the render view and we render it at this point, we would think that we should get the ground. But as you can see, it just renders the same as it did before. This can be a little tricky to figure out why. Um, what's happening here, if you notice this object is made up of one NURBS surface. NURBS are not supported by Redshift, so it draws it as nothing. Easiest way to fix this is right before we output it, insert a convert node, and then just leave this as the defaults, convert it to polygons. You'll notice that what happens here, we have the NURB surface with its curve is then turned into smaller polygons to represent that same surface. At this point, we should get a background along with our pale pigs. Perfect. The second texture that I want to do, just because it's easy, is this principal shader for the inside. If we come in here, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to just copy this parameter. I'm going to paste it into the OpenGL. I'm going to make it completely rough. And then I'm going to go in here, set this material to these presets are not all that great, so I'm going to set it to paper, paste the color in here, and turn off the backlighting transparency. We have no we have a complete reflective surface with no roughness, so this might not be what we want, but we'll come back and tweak these once we've got them working. Now setting this texture is a little more challenging because this is all going through Coming from here, if we look at the geometry spreadsheet for the pig, you can see there is a shop material path, which is set to a bunch of things. And then the, the values have groups. There's pig eyes, pig face, neck, and throat. You see the throat always uses the pig no V texture. The neck also uses the no UV texture. The face uses pig, and the eyes have their own material. So what I'm going to do is create a set of shaders for the three pig shaders. And we'll make these exciting so that it's obvious. Call them the same things they were called there. Um, I can remember what they were called. Pig no UV, pig, and eyes. So to make these really obvious, I'm going to start by making them bright blue. Pink. And let's say bright yellow. These are just to tell if we're setting the shaders correctly. 
And in here, we can insert a material node. So one thing you'll notice there is a bit of a pause because we have to rerun the animation up to frame 36. You can click down here if that becomes a problem for you. And that will turn off the updates. You'll have to then manually update or click on that again in order to get what you want. So what we remember from before is that we wanted the pig eyes. So I'm going to click on this little thing to stop this while we do this and set those to the eyes shader. So another easy thing to do is just move to frame one so the simulation doesn't have to run again. So we have three of these. So we have the eyes become eyes. We want the face to just become the pig shader. And we want the neck. I'm not sure why this is still co cooking. And throat. To become the pig no UV. So what these different shaders are is the neck and throat are just a solid color. And the pig itself is a texture. There's a texture map and some other things that we'll see in a minute. So at this point, the question is, why don't we see this? Well, we turned off this. And we're also looking in here. So it's interesting to note that what's happening here is the nodes are being packed as part of the RBD sim. So we start here with a bunch of primitives, vertexes, and then these are put into the, the different shop material paths. This is then broken up. It's RBD configured, which turns this into one point for each of the different pieces. This then goes through the sim and what comes out of this are these same set of points. I'll get into this in a minute why, but if you go into the, reg the Redshift render, well, actually, most of this will work. Of course, it's going to make a liar out of me. So what is actually wrong here? If we look at the pigs in the geometry spreadsheet. So we can't actually see inside the packed objects. So the easiest thing to do is just put an unpack node here. which you'll notice these now appear. We have pink, yellow, I don't see any blue. Oh, it's there, it's the eyes. So we're getting them both there. And I don't remember if we even set them here. I don't think we set the colors in this shader, but that's fine. That's why we didn't see them before. So it turns out we're gonna need this unpack a little later because I am I was not able to get the UVs from the pig face texture to make it through without unpacking the geometry. This is a small enough scene that it doesn't hurt anything to unpack. So next we'll make our real shaders. Oh, let's make sure, before I get there, let's make sure that we fix the texture for the inside. We want to point this at the new Redshift inside shader. which we've set up, 
It's not going to look much different, but we should start to see the inside looking good. So to make these shaders, we basically want to just copy the shaders that were used for Mantra. If we look at this again before we rewrite the materials, you'll notice the, the path is object the sin, this is the, the node, the test geometry pig head is this node. There's a shop net inside here and a pig no, a pig no UV. We can actually open this up, go into that shop net, and see the shaders here. Um, I'm going to start with this no UV shader because it's pretty simple. This is all locked so you don't get to see or change anything. But the main thing is it has a color which we will copy and a roughness of 0.3. Now roughness doesn't quite work the same in Redshift but it's still close. So this is the pig no UV. So I'm going to go ahead and paste this in which should show us in our scene this is this bottom piece of the pig that was called neck but it seems to just be this flat base part if we then go into the shader which I'm gonna again start for the pigs I'm gonna start with you know paper is fine we'll be setting the reflectivity just make sure we turn this backlighting translucency off. We'll set the base color, which gives us something here. And as far as reflection, right now I'm going to leave this with an IOR of 1. Actually, let's go back to plastic where this has a, an IOR of 1.49. And we'll move the roughness up mostly full paste our color. This will have the, the backlighting as zero. This should be pretty close to pig looking for this. We're looking at the base part underneath the little bust of the pig. And we see that pig color, that pink color still shows up here. Um, there's some lighting issues we'll get to in a few minutes. The eyes which we'll find in here. These have a base color of just black and they are mildly reflective. They have an IOR of 1.025 and a roughness of 0.1. don't think that corresponds with any real substance, but we can recreate that here. If we go into eyes, into the material, Let's go back to plastic. It seems to be, I find it to be an easy starting point. We, let's just set this to black. Make sure this is off. I'm going to set this to that 1.025 again with a roughness of 0.1. So they show up as black here. And if we go into the render view, we should be able to see... They're not very big, <clears throat> but we should be able to see the eyes in the texture, at least as black and slightly reflective. Our last shader is, this, uh, is the pig shader. And this is a little more complicated. Um, we do have this reflection of 1.025 again. Maybe this is skin, I'm not sure. There's a roughness of 0.3, but that doesn't actually matter because... And then the subsurface scattering parameters, all of these are actually coming from textures. The base color, the roughness, as well as subsurface amount and subsurface color are all coming from textures. And You notice the texture references use this opdef dot dot slash dot dot and then a file name. I haven't been able to get Redshift to be able to use these parameter, these types of things, but if you go into this, the type properties on the node itself, under extra files, the files are here. You can select one of the files, and then there's a save as file, 
and then you can just put it in the texture directory. So I've already saved these into the texture directory so that we could refer to them then from Redshift. So let's let's go ahead and create this texture. So I'm going to start I'm going to copy this same pink color into the OpenGL color so they look roughly pig-like in the viewer. And then within our Redshift material, we want to apply our textures. So again, I'm going to go back to plastic but I'm going to change the IOR to 1.025 to match what was given there. And then bring in an RS texture node, point it to the texture directory in the hips, and then we just take these names in. They're kind of named after what they want. This is the, the base color, the diffuse color here and we can actually render this to make sure that we're on the right track here. We should get pigs with the facial textures and the wrinkles and other things close to what is wanted. To make the rest of this work we go in here and we'll grab, let's take this next texture, which is the attenuation. So this is roughness of the reflection. The next texture is the subsurface spec and the subsurface SS. So subsurface spec This gets fed into, so we will take in this spec, the, the specular, and put this into the extinction coefficient, and it will take this last one and feed this into the scatter coefficient. I don't actually know if these are the right values. The effect is fairly subtle anyway. But if we go render, we do get, it's mostly around the lips, and this looks pretty good. They look like the little pig heads. We've got our inside texture. And I think we're pretty good as far as rendering goes. Last, we just need to fix, tweak some parameters in the Redshift renderer to get a good look out of it. Before going there, I wanted to show you what happens if we don't put this unpack node in from the geometry. If we don't unpack the geometry, first of all, we get no textures in the, the OpenGL preview. And what happens inside of here, we do get textures. Actually, everything seems to work fine now. So you can turn this unpack off once you're done with the preview, and you'll still be able to view the objects. You just don't get the textures in the viewer. So we can turn this back on to be able to preview our objects at the expense of more instances of the objects. So back here I wanted to tweak this redshift rendering ROP to get a better view. So I'm going to come in here and start by rendering. First thing that stands out to me is that we don't have any motion blur. So obvious first step is to enable motion blur, but that won't actually do anything. 
Um, the problem here is it doesn't have anything to know what the motion will be. Uh, this isn't simple geometry being moved at the top level. It's also not exactly a mesh, mesh deformation. Um, the sim does produce velocity data. And there's two ways to go about this. If we leave it unpacked, this will actually work. So let me show you that first. If we go into the pig render, you go into the redshift tab. If this doesn't exist, you go into the redshift menu and select add object parameters. And it will give you this tab in an object you created before you had redshift. Within here, we then need to find, here we are. So for this transformation, the types of motion blur, there is get the blur from the velocity attribute. So if we do this, we may have to actually stop it and redo it. Actually, we probably need this instance and particle blur as well. So we'll turn that one on. Try mesh deformation. I know one of these does it. There we go. So it's the mesh, mesh deformation blur that this is coming through. So I will point out that if we did do the unpack, we will lose all of our motion blur. And that's because the velocity attribute is being overwritten. Um, easiest way is you go into the unpack node where it says transfer attributes and we add V to that. Let it, give it a minute to catch up. And now we have our, our motion blur. I'm going to go ahead and turn this off because it is easier when we don't have the uh, unpacked objects. It's a little easier on memory. So now we have motion blur in our scene. Um, one thing you'll notice, the shadows are excessively dark, and this is because we're not doing, essentially we're not doing anything resembling ray tracing. Within this thing, we want to go into the global, so it's under redshift, global illumination, and you need to pick these engines here. So based on the manual, you just go in here and set these to brute force, irradiance point cloud, and set this to three. And this should at least simulate some global illumination, which will help give the scene color and light in darker areas of the scene. So you can see it lightened up quite a bit, even to begin with get a better idea of what this looks like when we do a real final render. There's still a pretty good shadow there, but a lot of stuff did lighten up. So other attributes that are worth enabling in here, um, you can set the, the camera resolution and any of these kind of things if you want um, the output. I generally leave this as it is. It seems to include the name of the HIP file and the, the renderer. Helps keep them unique. Um, you might be interested now that for at least new enough versions of Redshift, the Altus denoiser is available. My experience so far with many of these is that <clears throat> I actually seem to get better results just increasing the sampling inside of Redshift. So we can start with that. Minimum samples 4 and 16. This is not enough. Now I do want to go into the camera and I'm going to change this to 1920 by 1080. Uh, this gives us a bigger scene. We have plenty of performance in Redshift to be able to do this. <clears throat> Uh, 
Now it's hard to tell with the preview how many of these passes are going to be need. So what I do is leave this as render current frame. And we select render to M play. And then this will give us a regular full render. The little spiral based on the sample parameters here. So because of the global illumination, we get a first pass of basically rendering the illumination. Then the regular render comes in, and it's pretty noisy. So four is clearly not enough. Just a guess from this scene, I'm going to say we'll need at least 128 or so, especially with the motion blur. So I'm going to just set this to 128, and then we can do our render. This is lovely. Apparently Houdini is a game, as far as NVIDIA is concerned. So we're getting some good motion blur, not too much noise in the blur itself. Zoom in here, and you know, it's blotchy. Uh, this could be pick, fixed up with a, a noise pass afterwards. Um, that, that denoiser does do a very good job. This noise also may just be acceptable. It's not actually that bad, and it's running at 36 seconds per frame for rendering, so we can update this as necessary. Um, let's like come up with anything else that needs to be done. We don't have volumes. I think this is all of the things I wanted to set in here. All of these things are fine, memory is fine. So I'm going to up the samples just one more value. Now to make this even better, we could raise both of these to get the quality we want in the detailed areas, set the minimum samples lower, and play with the adaptive error threshold so that it does a good job of deciding when it needs those samples. But overall I think we've done a pretty good job of recreating the scene using Redshift.